Hello guys, it's Revolution. In this video, we're going to discuss Ultra Instinct Goku versus Ultra Instinct Vegeta as of chapter 80. Obviously, we haven't seen Vegeta fight for a few chapters and Goku fought before that. So it will be the last seen versions of these two characters, not any hypothetical versions of these characters moving forward. And of course, there is the big elephant in the room is, where have you been, Revolution? So I'll just get out of the way quickly. I originally took a break because of the YouTube copyright claims that were coming through from Toei, fake Toei accounts. And then it kind of just got a bit extended because of just personal situations, really. I've had a tough two years, to be honest, and it ended up just extending way longer than I intended it to. But I'm back. I'm back. Honestly, guys, life will keep knocking you down and knocking you down. But there's a famous quote from Rocky, which... I can, that I can definitely assent to by Rocky Balboa. I'm sure you know it, but I'll read it anyway, just in case you need to hear it. Because sometimes people do just need to hear a motivational quote. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Rocky Balboa, my friends. And hey, we kind of see this philosophy in Dragon Ball all the time. I think that's one of the biggest draws to Dragon Ball for me. Even when I'm not enjoying Dragon Ball, it's all about self-improvement. So, Goku versus Vegeta. Now, I'm starting my return with a big one, quite a controversial one. I'm not going to say there is a definite answer in this, but we're going to explore who is the strongest out of the two currently. Obviously, Goku ascended to Ultra Instincts, and we've seen it multiple times now. We saw it in the Tournament of Power against Jiren. We saw it against Moro, where he absolutely decimated Moro until Moro attained Mavis' powers and fought somewhat on an even playing field. And then, of course, we've seen it again against Granola. Vegeta, of course, has only demonstrated Ultra Ego once. The best thing about this comparison is we have seen these two transformations against the same character. So it makes it a lot easier to scale as opposed to previous comparisons we've made on this channel. And of course, many people have made in the power scaling community where we've basically had to take two characters fighting other characters and try and find ways to scale them against each other. So obviously, in terms of Ultra Instinct's portrayal, especially in the anime, and of course, we are talking about the manga here, but especially in the anime and even somewhat in the manga, you know, Ultra Instinct's portrayal has make, made it seem pretty much unbeatable, at least if wielded properly and correctly. Of course, Goku has never truly mastered Ultra Instinct up until the Moro arc, so every portrayal we've seen has always been beaten by something that was a lack of, rather than something to do with the form itself, the technique itself, mastery of self-movement. But it's always been portrayed as the ultimate technique. Of course, this kind of got probably blown out the water. I'm not going to say definitely blown out the water, but it definitely got put up in the air when Beerus heavily suggested that there was a technique that could surpass the angel's technique of Ultra Instinct. And that was, of course, something we were very aware of, but the Hakai ability that Gods of Destructions wield. Whereas before we thought Ultra Instinct's mastery of self-movement was the be-all and end-all of technique or power, I do remember often talking about videos how there were levels to Ultra Instinct and I do believe that got proved correct when we talked about Goku being at the bottom of the ladder or was it Goku that talks about being at the bottom of the ladder? It was one of them. And obviously Mayrus being higher up that ladder, at least when he had Ultra Instinct, if he still has Ultra Instinct of course, now he's been turned into a mortal. And of course Whis was even higher than that and the Grand Priest is even higher than that. So there is levels to Ultra Instinct and Goku is slowly climbing that ladder. But now we know that it's not just that technique alone that is at the top of the pyramid. Other abilities and techniques can match Ultra Instinct. But of course, it's also worth saying that it's just portrayed as that as an ability, as a technique. We do know that far superior power and speed can counteract Ultra Instinct, as we saw with Jiren in the Tournament of Power. Particularly in the anime, not so much in the manga, but also we know that magic can have some sort of effect against Ultra Instinct forms as well, mostly against Ultra Instinct sign against Moro. Moro mainly counteracted Ultra Instinct Goku only when he took Mavis's abilities. 
But the more Goku climbs that Ultra Instinct ladder, the harder it is to have an impact against Ultra Instinct. It starts to become that perfect form that is how it's mainly been portrayed. At least that's how I feel it's been portrayed anyway. But the dialogue between Whis and Beerus, Goku and Vegeta, right before they head off to find Granola, heavily suggests that Hakai destruction in terms of ability, in terms of its attacking output, can somewhat compete with Ultra Instinct. Maybe it won't compete with the pinnacle of Ultra Instinct, obviously that remains to be seen, but it does suggest that they can overlap each other in terms of strength here and there, depending on who climbs that ladder the fastest. If there is a destruction ladder, you would imagine so. Especially as we've seen Vegeta get stronger alone in his fight against Granola. We first got to see Ultra Instinct Goku against Granola in Chapter 73. Goku admits in Chapter 73, before he starts fighting Granola, that he cannot use this form for very long. Now we knew he couldn't use it for very long against Jiren in the Tournament of Power, but it did come as a surprise, particularly to me, considering he seemed to wield it effortlessly against Moro or Planet Moro. It didn't appear against Moro that he lost his ability to react his sharpness to react against Moro throughout that fight, but it is very possible that maybe the power between Goku and Moro was just too big for us to notice, or Moro in particular didn't know how to exploit Ultra Instinct as Granola does with his sharp shooting abilities and his, or should I say, vital point attacks. By all means, guys, let me know down in the comment section what you think. Why did we not see this decrease in Goku's abilities as he fought against Moro, as that fight in particular seems to go on longer than his fight against Granola. Obviously we know Granola is stronger than Moro, but we didn't see that kind of effect on Goku against Moro. It just seemed like he got overpowered and overwhelmed against Planet Moro. So obviously in Chapter 73 we saw Goku pretty much effortlessly dismantle Granola in Ultra Instinct. Obviously, it looks very effortless for Goku because he doesn't really give that many facial expressions in Ultra Instincts as opposed to other forms that are very expressive. So it's hard to determine how much power he's using. But what we do know against Granola in this particular instance is he was fighting long enough and fighting at such a power level that his abilities did start to decrease as the fight went on. And obviously, in the end, his accuracy dropped. And it did turn out he was fighting against a clone of Moro, not the full power Moro that was stated to be the strongest in the universe. But what we do know is he had very little problem with a clone of Granola, a portion of Granola's power that ultimately was too strong for Super Saiyan Blue using Ultra Instinct. We don't know how much Ultra Instinct in cohesion with Super Saiyan Blue particularly powers up his Super Saiyan Blue form. The only thing I can really look at to maybe gauge some kind of distinction is obviously at the beginning when Goku was in base and Vegeta was in Super Saiyan, Goku used Ultra Instinct, the ability of Ultra Instinct rather than the transformation and he was dodging almost on par with a Super Saiyan Vegeta so it gives him that kind of reaction time speed hacks, probably not the power and defensive hacks in terms of durability etc. He has feats similar to a Super Saiyan Vegeta and obviously we know Super Saiyan is stated to be 50 times base could be higher depending on what theories you think are true. So maybe it has that kind of increase on the Super Saiyan Blue transformation itself. Could be better considering Vegeta stated that when Goku uses the Super Saiyan forms that the ability of Ultra Instinct increases in those forms. Of course, none of them are as powerful as the silver haired iteration of Ultra Instinct. But like I said, a chunk of Granola's power wasn't a match for it, but it was too strong for Super Saiyan Blue using Ultra Instinct. But as soon as Granola's full power body enters the scene, he literally one-shots Ultra Instinct Goku. Now the question is, was Goku off guard? Personally, on a personal level, my subjective take on it is I do find that pill hard to swallow. I'm not saying it's impossible or even improbable. It's potentially a very realistic theory because Goku is looking around, he doesn't know where Granola is, but the reason I find it a hard pill to swallow is because, once again, the portrayal of Ultra Instinct has always been that it makes Goku's body react on its own. He doesn't necessarily need to see them coming or potentially even sense them coming to be able to dodge. It just avoids danger. So that's one theory that could be credible. There's not really that much to add to it, really, in terms of supporting it, but it could be credible. The other theory is that Granola was just too fast and too strong and because of this and Goku's accuracy decreasing, 
was able to just speed blitz Goku, which is another credible theory, to be honest. I'm not saying I particularly lean towards either one, but once again, like I said, I do find Goku not being able to react to hard pill to swallow, but is that just a Toyoism? Toyo Toro does do these things all the time. But Ultra Instinct Goku at least lies somewhere between clone granola and obviously full power granola. The reason I believe this is simply the fact that even after this fact, granola is still claiming to be the strongest in the universe. Vegeta seems to be supporting that notion. And granola witnessing Ultra Instinct Goku's power didn't seem to change Granola's mind on the fact that he's the strongest in the universe. Of course, it is possible that he just thinks Goku's defeated and he no longer can wield that power. But I didn't get that impression from it personally. But at least in terms of feats, he is stronger than a portion of Granola's power. Now, onto Ultra Instinct Vegeta. We see Vegeta use Super Saiyan Blue against the full power Granola. We don't know how much power Granola was using, but he did seem to exert more effort as the fight went on. We get some very interesting quotes from Vegeta concerning the fact that raw power alone doesn't necessarily win you a fight in Dragon Ball. And this is something we've been talking about on my channel for quite a while, to be honest. There are things that can be equalizers. And what I like about this particular sequence is Vegeta mentions battle experience and battle tactics, etc. to be those equalizers. Granola simply doesn't have the battle experience and know-how to fully utilize his power, which is something I know that Dragon Ball Dave, if you're watching the video, give him a shout out. Dragon Ball Dave has often talked about that when characters get stronger in their fights, they're actually adapting to their full power rather than going beyond their full power and adapting to getting more power, if that makes any sense. It's a very interesting theory. Anyway, Vegeta mentions this and we actually see Vegeta pulling off some feats against what you could easily say is a stronger granola than the one that Ultra Instinct Goku fought. Obviously, Vegeta doesn't really do that much damage, at least until he achieves Ultra Ego. At this point, he actually starts to do significant damage to a granola who seems to at least be exerting himself at his full power. We see Vegeta landing multiple blows whilst using Ultra Ego, including breaking Granola's shield and actually causing visible damage to Granola in his proper body using his full power. Even prompting Granola at one point to say, you stronger than me, he's questioning it. Now, I don't know if that necessarily does mean that Vegeta using Ultra Ego grows stronger than Granola, but the fact that he's questioning it means that Granola himself at least believes that Vegeta is somewhat relative to him. As so in that regard, you could say, at least in terms of Granola's beliefs, after facing Ultra Instinct Goku, Granola still believed he was the strongest in the universe. But after facing Ultra Ego Vegeta, he was questioning whether he was the strongest in the universe. You could say that this is supported by the fact that Granola himself notes that he is also getting stronger in this battle. And to ultimately defeat Ultra Ego Vegeta, even at the point where Vegeta is probably losing strength and oomph, as Goku puts it, due to the fact he's taken too much damage, Granola is pretty much going all out to finish Vegeta off. Obviously, we knew Granola got stronger in his fight against Ultra Ego Vegeta alone. He actually acquired a further power-up when his left eye turned into one of those sniper eyes. I don't even know what that's called, to be honest. When his second eye evolved into what his right eye is, he powered up and was really gunning for Vegeta then, and that's when he started to defeat Vegeta, really. So... Vegeta was fighting a character who'd gone beyond the level of power he had when he actually basically one-shotted Goku. Of course, there is the whole theory of whether Goku was off guard or not, which of course we can delve further into in just a moment once we get past how Vegeta fared. Obviously, this was just round one of Ultra Ego Vegeta against Granola. Of course, after getting knocked back into base and Goku kind of helping Vegeta out a little bit, Vegeta was able to transform into Ultra Ego again and fight against Granola again, in which he got stronger than even before. Even Granola noted that he thought Vegeta had hit his limit, but Vegeta had gone past that. Vegeta didn't necessarily last that long in this particular battle, though. As we know, with Ultra Ego, the more damage he takes, he gets stronger. But of course, it takes a toll on his body. And this fight eventually leads to a point where Granola is literally going to use up the last of his power in order to defeat Vegeta. So obviously there's a level of subjectivity on how Ultra Instinct Goku would perform against a fully powered Granola. But what we do know is, is that Ultra Instinct Goku is definitely stronger than a portion of Granola's power. But 
He either was defeated by a full power granola, completely speed blitzed and basically one shotted. Or he is stronger than that when he's not caught off guard and he can fight against it. But we're really talking about hypotheticals with Ultra Instinct Goku. Whereas with Ultra Ego Vegeta, we know by feats that he can compete with a fully powered granola. In fact, he can compete with a stronger granola than the fully powered granola that took out Goku. So in terms of feet, you've got to say that Vegeta's stronger. But if there's anything we've really been learning throughout this arc is a higher power level doesn't necessarily mean you win the fight. There are equalizers. So it really comes down to the abilities as well of Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct. Ultra Instinct Goku is basically untouchable until he starts losing some accuracy when it comes to similar power levels. So the question is, would Ultra Ego Vegeta be able to land any offensive against Ultra Instinct Goku until his accuracy starts dropping? Does Vegeta have the repertoire of attacks that Granola has that are so precise that hit Goku's vital points? like Granola does. We know that Vegeta is more experienced and a better fighter than Granola, but does he have that kind of arsenal in his belt? I would think so. I think once Goku's accuracy starts dropping, I think he will start finding openings because he's very astute. But I do think he would find it difficult to begin with when Goku's openings aren't quite so open. However, we do know that <laughs> Goku landing any offensive is only going to make Vegeta stronger. I guess the question is, is can Goku output attacks that are going to be strong enough to completely override Vegeta's ability to take attacks and let them invigorate him to becoming stronger? Basically, how I see it is Goku has a very short amount of time to actually put Vegeta down. I'm not going to say it's not possible, but he would have to do it very quickly. The moment Goku's accuracy starts dropping, the more attacks he lands on Vegeta, is only going to increase Vegeta's power, which I've got to say, based on feats and events that we've seen so far, if you're going to power scale it in that way, you've got to say Vegeta has demonstrated in the manga the better power feats. You could even say Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta showed a better durability feat than even Ultra Instinct Goku. The open-ed question that ultimately remains is whether Goku, before his accuracy starts dropping, is capable of defeating a full power granola or at least an initial full power granola that's obviously up for debate i'd love to know your take on it down in the comment section whereas we do know that vegeta can take on an initial full power granola in fact you can even compete with a powered up full power granola obviously there's variables going on goku's strength at full power of ultra instinct before his time limit starts breaking down his accuracy we did make a big thing of this before goku left during Goku's training that his time limit in Ultra Instinct is his biggest detriment. That's the question guys. Can Goku finish Vegeta off? I would say on a personal note that I think Vegeta would probably win this fight as it is right now. Mainly because of Goku's depiction against Granola. He did seem to run out of accuracy very very quickly against a much weaker Granola than the version Vegeta fought. Now obviously Goku probably has gotten stronger since he fell out of Ultra Instinct. He has been healed a few times, so I do imagine he's got stronger, but this is really based on the version of Ultra Instinct Goku we saw against Granola and the version of Ultra Ego Vegeta against Granola. And I think right now Vegeta has the feats on his side, as well as the fact that he gets stronger whilst Goku arguably gets weaker or at least loses accuracy over time. So guys, get your thoughts down in the comment section. Who do you think wins this fight as of right now? I'm sure things will change in the upcoming chapters, but this is a video that's a product of its time, this date. Let me know your thoughts. I am looking forward to reading them. It has been a while. Just pop by, say hello down in the comment section. Let me know how you've been. I do care. I really do. So drop your thoughts down in the comment section. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you're new, then please do subscribe. Smash that like button. And we'll talk again soon. Ad Astra.